we're going to solve here these three different recurrence relations. All of them are first order recurrence relations, which means they only rely on the term that comes previously. They're actually also all what we call linear recurrence relations, which means that the terms of the sequence, the un and the un minus one, are just times or added together. Um, there's no squaring on the terms. Before we get stuck in, I want you to look at them and play spot the difference. I don't just mean spot uh, the d different colours. What are the, the fundamental differences between these things? Right, I'm going to tell you. This one is just times by a number. It doesn't have any, anything added on the end. This one does have something added on, the, added on the end, but it's not times by anything out in front. Well, it's times by one, but it's not times by anything other than one. And the third one has both. It's times by something, and it's got something added on on the end. And the way we attack each of these different types is different. Our way into recurrence relations, if you stuck us how to start, is to just find a few terms. Now, I've not given you a first term for any of these. I'm going to leave that for a different video or leave that to you. We're just going to find what are called the general solutions to these. And then you might apply some initial conditions afterwards, some initial terms if you know them. So let's just pick some random initial terms when we're figuring out just some, ter just some terms of these. Uh, so let's say that u0 is going to be one just when we're getting our heads around it so this first one what's it doing what's this doing with u0 is one then u1 is going to be five times that u2 is going to be five times that u3 is going to be five it's just times it by five each time that's not too hard uh, this next one if u0 is one then u1 is going to be the thing that came before it plus two lots of one add one, which is uh, one add two add one, that's four. U2 is the thing that came before it plus two lots of two add one, four, eight, and nine, blah, 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 blah. So it's taking the one before and adding on this thing, but it's not doing anything to the one that comes before it. It's not timesing it. This one, I won't bother doing the same. I think I've got my head around these. It's, it is timesing the thing that came before and it's adding something on. I think my head's in the game for how we're gonna solve these. So let's start with the blue one. If it's just timesing by the same thing each time, then Whatever we, it's going to start out in a number, and we don't necessarily know that that's one. That was just for getting our heads around it. We're scrubbing that out. It's going to start with some number, and then times by five each time. And the way we're going to times by five each time is just five to the power of n. And that's that's it. We're done. It's as easy as that. It's some number times five to the n, and if in the question we're given what u zero is, or what u one is, or what, what u anything is, we can sub that in and find out what a is. That's it, we're done. Okay, the next one. So I've noticed that it's not times by anything, it's just the thing that's come before, and then with this added on. So, what's the solution gonna look like? Well, it's going to be whatever number we started with, let's say k, and then it's adding this on each time. So the first one's going to add on this with n equals 1, the second one's going to add on this with n equals 2, the third one's going to add on this with n equals 3. We know a way of writing a sum like that. Uh, so I'm going to make sure to use a letter here that's not a letter I've used so far. It's going to start at r equals 1 and add up to r equals n of this thing, 2r plus 1. That's exactly what we're doing here. It's the first thing and then adding on this each time. I think this makes sense. Now what we should do is 
play with this so we don't have to write it as a sum anymore and that uses uh, some skills that we know from a different chapter, the series chapter. We can break up this sum like this. Equals one to n. If we're summing one n times, that's just uh, that's just n. Let's leave that to the next step. I'll make it clear. Uh, so we've two dots of that and one dot of that. Great. That is. I know that the formula for this is half n n plus one. Two times half n n plus one plus n and we could neaten that up in some way like go on let's do it plus and again i think i can factorize this n and this n so we've got an n plus two in there um n n plus two and up with that fab now the next one where we're doing both at the same time, timesing something and adding something on, that's where it gets a little bit more complicated. Let's write that out on a different page. 3 UN minus 1 plus 2. 3 UN minus 1 plus 2. 3 minus 3 UN plus 1. U N plus 1. What? Did I mess it like that? Oh my god, I've forgotten already. 3 UN minus 1 plus 2 N. 3 u n minus 1 plus 2 n okay we here need to combine elements of the previous two solutions because we're timesing something and adding something on in the first solution when we're timesing something times by something each time the solution was well let's just break it up into that Let's just ignore this for a second. Imagine it's that first case. UN is three UN minus one. What would the solution to this bit be? Well, it would be some constant times three CN, because it's just times about the same thing each time. Doing this has a name. What this bit is called, without this bit on the end, it's called the homogeneous equation. Not necessarily for understand not necessarily really for understanding what it what we're doing, but you do need to know that vocab. By ignoring that there, we've got the homogeneous equation. Okay. Now we're going to ignore the first bit, sort of, and we're going to just guess. This is a weird bit here. We're going to look at this bit and guess at an answer that's going to work. So I've got some constant times n. I'm going to guess that it's going to be some constant times n. It's going to be something linear like this uh, now i've made that guess because i've done a few of these there's some there's a table in the textbook that gives a list of suitable guesses depending what this is but what's important to know here if you make a guess and you get it wrong say i guessed an n squared uh, would be a solution to this and i got it wrong i'd just try something else it's it's useful to remember the table a little bit but if you forget it it's not the end of the world we're just making a guess and plug it in and seeing if it works. So let's do that. Plug it in. Uh, it goes here and it goes over here. So we've got UN is UN minus one. So it's the term with N minus one in it. Plus two N. So I've plugged my guess. into the here now let's rearrange this let's tidy it up we've got i'm gonna expand this we've got 3a n 3a times minus 1 3b plus 2m now we want this to work for all values of n this is actually an identity here 
because we want it to work for all values of n. So what we can do here is if we want to do, if we want it to work for all values of n, we can equate some coefficients. Let's tidy it up a little bit more first. Let's get all the n's together. So how many n's have we got? We've got uh, a minus 3a minus 2n and we've got I'm taking everything across the left uh, 3a minus 3b equating coefficients means that if this needs to work for every value of n um, and we know it's equal to zero, then this bit must equal, be equal to zero and this bit must be equal to zero. So this bit tells us that um, 2a plus 2 is zero. I can do that in my head. a is negative one. And then this bit tells us if we've got minus three, minus three b, is zero, that's minus three B equals three. B is also negative one, hey! Fab, maybe you'd want to do some working there, but I was trying to say the best one. Okay, um, and so with these values, we found something that works. UN is minus N minus one, that works. What we've done there, that has a name to it as, as well. What we've done there is find a particular solution. Now, here's where the, where the magic happened. It seemed weird to split this up into two. What we're allowed to do at the end is just add those together. The final solution, what we call the general solution, is this oh where i've just added the other two together why are we allowed to do that you might ask the answer is to do with it's it's called linearity it's because we haven't got i mentioned this in uh, just before it's because we haven't got any squares on these things because it's all to do with just timesing the terms and adding things, the solutions work out that we can just times them and add them as well. Um, you can look up what linearity means a bit more uh, if you want to understand that a bit more. Um, but we can, if we've got two solutions and the, the initial thing was linear, we can just add them together. And we've got the general solution now. That so an overview there, if we have this where it's timesing something and it's adding something on, we split it up into two things. We solve that, the homogeneous bit, then we find just a particular thing, a guess, that works for that bit, plugging it in to the whole thing, and then we add them together. 